Hi there. I have a late bloomer fan that I met at the National Heirloom Expo in 2017. She and her husband have come down from Marin County, Northern Cal, and they're going to see my garden for the first time. So stay tuned. There they are. <laughs> Hello, oh wow! Good morning. <laughs> we finally made it to your garden. I know it's so exciting. Well, well oh tell, tell them what you brought me. Well, um, this year I attended the National Heirloom Festival again because it's my favorite festival, and I brought you an heirloom Guatemalan squash. That's which I think is so incredible. beautiful. It's such a neat color, and I've I've tasted this one before, uh -huh. and it's actually really delicious. One of the huge and most popular exhibits in one of the auditoriums. Um, are the huge squash pyramids and the day after the festival ends they put the call out to the community to come and pick up all this squash all this beautiful heirloom squash okay so I have a Euro van a 2000 Euro van and it was completely empty and I packed it with so much squash <laughs> that I don't know how the wheels turned to get me back home <laughs> So Richard, I hope you like squash. I do, I do like squash, and what it means is that our breezeway is filled with squash, our front yard is filled with squash, and we've gone around to all the neighbors offering them squash, and I looked up some things on the internet about heirloom squash and what they were, plus a recipe or two, and we added those to the squash when we gave them out to people in the neighborhood. I'm so yeah. glad I'm here. Did you want to say something else? Um, no, just that I've always um, dreamed of coming to see your garden, Kay, so I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was coming over here and I saw your Malabar spinach and it, it, it's sending out the tendrils. It looks like it's trying to grab your neighbors as they walk by, you know, like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. You know oh, what? I should get a shot. <laughs> you gotta see how many pineapple guavas are down there. Wow, there must be two or three hundred down there. More on that end. Wow. It may be a pain to get in there and get those. There you go. This is the desert fig, and there may not be a green one left on here. I don't see one actually. A couple from here. Yeah, that's part of the other tree. Okay. Is that one right in front of your head there a good one? This one. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a nice one. We should eat that. Absolutely. You haven't had breakfast, have you? Not yet. Okay, good. <laughs> Abundance. I love it. <laughs> there's, there's no such thing as too much. <laughs> Got there. Oh my gosh, this ten? is easily 15? at least 10. Yeah. At least 10, probably a little more. Didn't have too many good figs, had a lot of mushy ones, right? A lot of mushy ones. I probably have about a pound or two here. But it's plenty for breakfast. <laughs> oh, or, or a fig tart even. I laughed when she said fig tart, but then she said it's so easy to make. Oh, absolutely. So, uh, I have a fig tree in my backyard, and of course when they ripen, they ripen all at once. Yeah, that's uh, the so problem. I slice them uh, lengthwise, and I, uh, sort of like a deck of cards, make a round uh, circular uh, disc of figs on top of you could do jam or you could do cream cheese and uh, you could put that on a phyllo uh, dough crust so which is pretty easy because you can buy that at the store well i can make a crust yeah and, and pop that in the oven for a little bit until it browns so good you don't have Delicious. to do anything else that's it oh wow that's we're it. gonna do that <laughs> 
So this is your front yard? So this is my front yard. And oh, um, wow. And there there none of this was there before. I mean some of some of it was. Um, I <laughs> do the back to Eden method. Right. So my neighbors are used to me having a huge pot that's small. I've already worked on this pile, okay. but huge piles of wood chips in my driveway. Okay, the most amazing thing. Glenda knows about olives. Now I have, there's a monarch. I have held off doing a video about my olives because it's such a big subject and the olive fruit fly is in, in, infests every single olive on a tree. I've got thousands of olives on this one tree alone. And so I've always been thinking, well, there's nothing I can do about it. But Glenda just told me that uh, if you process your olives um, in the Ital Italian style, you have to first brine your olives, which involves putting them in a huge vat with very salty water. And you change that water every f two to three days. And as that's helping uh, with uh, making sure the tannins leave the olive, uh, but also too, it will uh, kill the little um, little buggies that are inside your olive, and it it won't be an issue in the flavor with the final product, with the end product. Because of how salty the water is, uh, many of them will try and exit the olive. Yeah. So as you're changing out the water, you're also kind of getting rid washing of- Washing them away. That's right, washing them away, getting rid of the, the little pests that might be inside. And then the, the pit stays in the olive? It does, oh, okay. it does. So she says that my olives are ready to pick right now. Yeah, they're looking they're looking ready to me. Uh, okay. It's uh, the beginning of uh, October. Right. And this is about the time that they would be ready. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick a few and you're going to show me the perfect ripeness. Okay. And then uh, two days from now, Eric will be here and I'm going to get him on a ladder and we're gonna, he, I'm going to have him clean off this tree. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Great. Okay. <laughs> so all of these that have turned color. Even, are, are they supposed to be soft? Or? No, just uh, turned like that. Most, I would say, uh, at least uh, eighty percent uh, black. <laughs> it was her idea to make a fig tart. So I'm in charge of the crust, and she's going to work on the figs but she also saw some ripe pears sitting on my table and she said pears and figs go together like beautifully like a marriage like yeah. a marriage yeah <laughs> like a good marriage some marriages <laughs> not all marriages <laughs> little tip for baking use parchment paper underneath a cleanup is so much easier right linda yeah and you just feel so professional when you're using parchment paper <laughs> Oh and wait, she's telling us her secret to pastry. So I'll zest uh, a Meyer lemon or if, just a regular lemon if that's what you have. And I'll add maybe half a teaspoon of the zest to your flour mixture. Ooh, then I love that. It gives this kind of wonderful aroma to the crust. Nice. That pairs with the fruit so beautifully. Oh, I and love it just it. just it just takes it to another level. Oh, I'm loving <laughs> it. It's just so nice. That's wonderful. <laughs> all right, so I'm rolling out the crust, and uh, she's getting the fruit already, and uh, things are moving along. This is going to be <laughs> so good, delicious, perfect for a day like today. Are you, Beautiful! Look at that. Are Look you at ready you. with your? Uh, yeah. Well, I I could have used a little bit more dough, but it's sufficient. Oh yeah, no, that's perfect. I have ginger. Do you want to use ginger for any reason, or? We could. We could use all kind any spice you want to use. I am sprinkling some sugar and some spices underneath where the fruit will go, and as the fruit melts down and cooks, it'll meld and blend beautifully with the caramelization of the sugar and the spices underneath. Now we can add some spices. I have some cloves here. I'm just going to sprinkle just a tiny yeah. bit. Let's see. And allspice. Some allspice. We'll just do a little bit there. Some cinnamon. And you can't really mess up the spices too badly. If you do a little bit more or a little bit less, you're, you'll still be okay. It'll still 
uh, tastes pretty nice. Ginger. And then you can just take your hand and the sugar and the spices, you just kind of blend them together just so that you have a nice even distribution all around the bottom of your fruit bed inside the crust. We have red pears and dianju, looks like, and your figs from your garden. So here you can sort of do any design that looks pleasing to you. Uh, the easiest, I find, is just a row of one type of fruit. Like, you could start off with the pears. Oh, this is fun. And sort of overlap them a little bit. Right? Or, you could decide, oh, I like to do some alternating colors. Maybe do the red, and then bring in a little bit of the yellow. We eat first with our eyes, so the more pleasing you make it look, the better. You want to sort of stack them so that they're pretty close together because as it cooks the fruit will shrink so you can pack in quite a lot of fruit yeah when you cut up that much i thought that's way too much for that little pan but i see what you're doing now <laughs> and then if you have any little gaps you can stick another little piece in there at the end of the day it's all about how it tastes and so having being able to make a tart with your the fruit growing from your garden is really like the ultimate. The next thing we're gonna do, now that we've got all of our fruit assembled in the pan, is we're gonna add some sherry to some sugar Oops. that I have here. Okay. And we'll sort of let that sherry saturate. Mm -hmm. And now it's sort of like a syrup consistency. Okay. And I'm just gonna drizzle that up and down on top of the fruit. Okay. And back and forth. Try it. I'm gonna try and get every little spot of the top of the tart. And that's pretty much all of it. There we go. And last but not least, we've got some butter that I just cubed into little cubes. And I sprinkle that along the top as evenly as I can. And as this cooks, the butter will melt and it just gives it a really wonderful, yummy mouthfeel to have that, that creaminess of the butter and the sugar and it all starts to caramelize together. It's just, it's wonderful. So now we're gonna put this in the oven at 375 for 25 to 30 minutes. I look for some caramelization. I'll, I'll look for the crust turning lightly brown and you'll smell it in the house. It'll smell so good. Don't be surprised if your neighbors come knocking on your door. We're starting to smell the sugary sweetness of this tart. So I'm thinking this is done. Wow. But yeah, all the areas that look like it's too like watery or something, it'll start to kind of become like a, like more syrupy and thick. Good. This is where my tomatoes were. Oh, wow. This is the only one that's left and it's got okay. mildew on it. put in all these beans late. So here we are with our beautiful fig and pear tart. Delicious. And um, hibiscus tea, right? That's what this is. Yeah. <laughs> hibiscus, I put uh, lavender essential oil and um, some of my lemon in it too. Mm. Mm -hmm. Here we go. I think it's a winner. <laughs> mm. Oh my, that's so good. That's a winner. Mm. I think we did all right. Mm. As I've said many times before, nothing makes me happier than sharing my garden with my fans. What did you think, Richard? Have you seen very many videos? I've, I've seen a lot of them and this was amazing. It's so much better to see it in person. It was beautiful. Absolutely oh, yeah, I loved it. I've been wanting to come and see it for so long and finally we got the opportunity and I'm well, so glad we stopped by. <laughs> this gal has an amazing garden and we're going to figure out the right time for me to go and visit. She, You've got, name it off, chickens. Chickens, rabbits, uh, vegetable garden, fruit trees, 
uh, medicinal plants, uh, flowers, roses, you name it. Wow, that sounds awesome. <laughs> with all of the vegetables and fruits that we grow. We love to cook, so. Well, I hope you <laughs> like squash. I love squash. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for watching this video. And if you enjoyed this one, be sure to check out these. And don't forget to hit that thumbs up. And uh, if you see that face up there, just click on that and subscribe while you're at it. Thanks so much. Happy gardening.